What is going on guys, Joe here, back with another video, and this week was Apple's yearly WWDC event, which is their worldwide developers event, announcing new software for iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and Mac. Now in this video, we'll be taking a look at new features that are gonna be available in iOS 14, which is gonna be the new software that will be dropping in the fall. Now currently it's only available for those who have their devices registered with a developer's account. But for those who don't have a developer's account, you can actually install the public beta, which will be available in July. Now, because it is a beta, there's gonna be bugs and everything because it's not the final version. That'll be available in the fall of 2020. And iOS 14 is gonna be compatible with any of these devices here listed on screen. So if you have a device that's as old as an iPhone 6, s or newer you will be able to install ios 14 on your device but without wasting any more time let's get into what's new with ios 14 and check out some of the top features that i think you should know about first off one of the biggest things that many have been wanting is widgets and as you see here i have widgets on this screen here normally you can only get them in the today's view which are now shown like this and now on my home screen, I have apps right here, and then I have a large widget and a little square here and another square widget right there. This is a feature many expected for iOS 14, and it is finally here. And with these widgets, they are accessible. If you just tap on it, it'll open up the app. And also, if you swipe up or down, you can access other widgets. So you can actually stack widgets on top of widgets if you want to do that. Like I have here, I have my calendar and then I have my notes, and then I have my reminders. And then down here, you have your battery widget, which is pretty cool. It'll show four different devices that are connected. So I have my iPhone's battery along with the Apple Watch. And if I open up my AirPods Pros here, it'll show the battery of my AirPods as well. Now the way to actually put a widget onto your screen, it's very easy. You just gotta put your device into wiggle mode just like you normally do to move around your icons. So just tap and hold. And then now you have a little plus button right up here on the top left. So you just tap on that. And then now you have access to all your different widgets. So right here you have things listed as smart stack, which we'll go into here in a second, but you have battery, calendar, fitness, maps, music, news, notes, photos, podcasts, all that good stuff here. So alongside this third party apps will also be able to take advantage of the widgets. They just have to, of course, bring out a widget for their application that'll be supported on the home screen. But when we do select a widget here, let's just try one out. For example, let's do fitness. Now here we'll have my activity. So you can select a small or a large one on this one, but there is other widgets that allows you to select small, medium, or large. So for example, let's do the notes. Here we got a small widget then we have a medium size widget and then a large size widget here so it'll display a lot of information you can simply hit add widget or you can just press and hold on that widget and just drag it to your home screen wherever you like to put it at if I want to drop it right here I can do that and then just hit done and then now I have that widget placed right there now you can simply tap on the widget and then have access to that certain app now to delete the widget it's super easy press and hold and then just remove widget and hit remove simple as that now you can move these widgets around if you'd like so i can move this right over here and then also i can move this one press and hold just drag it anywhere else and then i have my icons down here on my apps right there now right now i have a list of different widgets here as you saw earlier i have my music right here actually my calendar and then my weather and my fitness activity right there now you can actually stack up more widgets if you just press and hold and then go to the add widgets and let's say we want to add another square widget let's do the stock widget here I can actually just drag and drop over here right now. It's kind of buggy. So trying this again here, if I just simply drag this on top of there, I'm able to stack that on top of the other widgets. So now I have access to three different widgets right here, which is pretty cool. But there's also a new smart stack widget, which if we go to add, we go down here to smart stack. 
With SmartStack, it has a set of widgets you can swipe through that uses on-device intelligence to give you the right widget at the right time based on things like time, location, and activity. So it could be the fact that in the morning, you can have maybe the news pop up right here. And then midday, you have your calendar events and then your commute time from Apple Maps in the evening. So depending how you use your device, the widget up here will change automatically, which is pretty cool. So that's the demo of widgets on iOS 14. Now, another thing, if you swipe on over all the way to the right, we now have a thing called app library. This is a place where all your apps that you've downloaded and you have installed on your iOS device would be organized automatically by suggestions, recently added, and utilities, productivity, creative. These are all automatic. You can't edit any of these. It'll just simply place those apps in those different sections. Now the apps will reorder depending on the usage. So it'll be sort of intelligent and try to give you the app that it thinks that you'll use from any of these categories. Now, if you want to search for any app, you can easily tap on app library on here on the top search bar, and then you'll have all your apps alphabetized right here. So you can look for that app and then just launch it if you like. Or you can do the traditional way, which is what I always did was use the search tool and just swipe down. You can actually swipe down, for example, here on your home screen and then search for that certain app. But this is just another way to view your apps and have them a little bit more organized. And it'll show you what apps you may be wanting to use depending how you use your device, location, time of day, and things like that. Now, for those of you who maybe don't like to have your devices all scattered everywhere, I personally try to put them all in folders, but now there's a way to hide apps that you don't want to be shown on the home screen. It's as easy as press and holding, go into wiggle mode, and down here where you have the dots for the pages, uh, you can actually swipe through them if you like. But one thing now is if you tap on there, now you have the ability to edit pages. So let's say I don't want this page here. I can unselect that, unselect this other page. And now all I have is these two pages once I hit done. And just like that, there's no more third or fourth page. When I swipe all the way to the right, I have my app library again. This stays on there, but the other pages go away. If you wanna bring them back, just press and hold, and then you can tap down here again, and then just select those pages again. But if you wanna just have one home screen, you can move all these to that home screen and be done with it. So how I had it earlier, I can simply do this, move this around, and pretty much done just like that. Now, when I swipe over, I have my app library, but I just have one main screen, which is pretty cool. Less clutter and a little bit more organized. Now we also get a new compact user interface for phone calls, FaceTime calls, or even third party calls. But when you receive a call, it'll now appear as a banner instead of taking your whole entire screen. So you can still be using your phone and not get interrupted because it just shows up on top like this. Now you can either swipe up on the banner to dismiss it or swipe down to access the full extended phone features and tap to answer. Now speaking about Compact UI, there's now a new Compact Siri. So Siri has got a slight little redesign and now doesn't take up your whole screen as well. You just see this little Siri icon at the very bottom. Now when you do use Siri, you ask it something, what's the tallest building in the US? It now shows up at the top, just like a notification, so it doesn't take up your whole screen. Now, Apple does say this got improvements as well, as far as information, but I still haven't used it much, but I do like the new Compact Siri. Now, if you love watching video on your device, or maybe you're taking a FaceTime video call, this feature you might enjoy, because now, with iOS 14, you have picture-in-picture -picture for video. So this means you can be watching a video on your device and then start doing other stuff. So if you maybe need to write an email and watch your favorite show on Netflix, you can do that. So you can move this around wherever you like on the screen 
And if you want to kind of hide it away for a second, you can just swipe it over to the edge of the screen. And then you have this little tab right here that you can also drag up and down. When you're ready to start watching again, you can just drag it over and then you have your video back up. You can also resize the video, whether you want to make it smaller or larger by pinching in or out with your fingers. Now, if you get a FaceTime call, it also even works for that too. So right here, let me go ahead and accept this call. So it also works for FaceTime video. I can simply swipe up and then I have my FaceTime video right here while I do something else on my device, which is pretty cool. These are features Apple has been late in the game about, but I'm glad that it's finally on iOS because other devices, other Android devices have been having these features for the longest time. Now some new additions to the messages app is the fact that we can now pin conversations straight on top of messages. So if you simply swipe right on one of the threads, you now have this pin icon here. You can tap on that. It'll pin to the top and that way you can easily get to those conversations. Now when you have your pinned conversations up top, you'll be able to get notified when someone is typing or they do a tap back. It'll show it right there on that icon. Now, if you have a group pin right up top, you can actually customize the icon. Now, if you have a group chat going on, you can actually pin that as well. But now you'll be able to also add just an icon. But now you can add an icon to that group chat. And that way it'll just show as an icon. So here I can simply put. So here I have my sisters, for example, and then I just put the two dancing girls right there. And now it shows up as that icon right up here. Now you can pin up to nine conversations right up top and it'll cross sync to iPad OS and Mac OS. Now there's more improvements to the group messaging because now you can actually do inline replies, which allows you to directly reply to a specific message in the group chat. Now you'll be able to view the replies in the full conversation or you can view them in their own thread. Now you can also mention people in the group chat by simply typing in somebody's name and then that person pops up. So when sending that message, it'll notify them that they just got mentioned in the group chat. But we also got improvements on Memoji. So now you have new hairstyles, new Memoji stickers, and also new headwear styles. And with this whole pandemic going on in the world, uh, now your Memoji can actually have face covering. So you can have a face mask, customize it whatever color you want but that's a thing now as well now another little tweak that has been added to ios 14 is the fact that you can search through your emojis now so when you tap on the bottom left for your emojis instead of having to scroll through all your emojis maybe you can't find one you can now search right up top and type in whatever emoji you're looking for so if we are looking for a truck or a car you can just type in, for example, truck, and then these are the truck emojis. So it's a lot easier to find, and this is actually something that's been on Mac OS, and I'm glad they brought it to iOS now. Another addition to iOS 14 is going to be the improvement in Apple Maps, which is definitely needed. With Apple Maps, you now have routes for cyclists along bike lanes, bike paths and bike friendly roads. And you can even preview the elevation for your ride and check how busy a street is and set routes to avoid steep inclines or stairs. Now, for those of you who have electric vehicles, it now can give you electric vehicle routing, which I think is pretty cool. With this feature, it'll allow you to plan a trip for your electric vehicle. That way it automatically adds charging stops along your route and even accounts for the charging time when calculating the ETA. Now iOS 14 also adds a new translation app that can translate your voice into text and then convert it into a different language. Simply press the little mic button right here. What is the weather like in Texas? It'll quickly translate it in text here but we can also play it and listen back. Now, if your native language is something else, then you can simply tap on this 
here and then select whatever language you speak. But these are the current languages that it can translate from. And down here at the bottom, you can download for offline use. So you won't have to have an internet connection to be able to use this app. Now on the other side, of course, that's when you select the other language you want to translate to, but you can also simply text it and then convert and convert that into another language. Now, if this is something you say often, you can easily star it and that'll go into your favorites down here at the bottom, right? So then you have all your recent translations and then your favorite translations up top. Now this app can also work in landscape and you can easily translate side by side, just hit the voice button and then just have a conversation back and forth. This is going to be a very useful app for those who travel or if you run into somebody that doesn't speak your language and y'all need to communicate somehow. But these are going to be some of the notable iOS 14 features that will be dropping in the fall. But I want to know your thoughts. What's your favorite feature in iOS 14? Is it the new widgets that you can add to your home screens? Or is it the new features in messages where you can pin conversations or reply directly to somebody in a group conversation? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, but stay tuned for more videos because we'll be covering iPad OS as well and also watch OS 7. Feel free to drop also a line down below in the comments what you'd like to see covered on the channel. But as always, if you did enjoy this video, let me know by hitting that like button down below as it not only lets me know they enjoyed it, but it also shows support to the channel. Also, if you want to keep up with the latest, go ahead and follow me on social media like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. I'll leave those down below in the description. And lastly, if you feel like being awesome, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. That way you'll be notified every time I drop a new video. Anyways, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate your support very much. And uh, I'll catch you all on the next one. All right. Peace.